Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Jesus Name Ministries. Um, good afternoon, and uh, just wanted to cover some of the things that, uh, again, we've been posting, and uh, just kind of want to run you through a little bit of extra stuff that uh, I've uncovered and kind of looked at and <clears throat> share that with you today. And uh, so, anyhow, let's get started here. One of the things I wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to mention here, and we'll, we'll, we'll do a little more research on this one, but uh, Stephen, the Bible says in Acts that uh, he was stoned, and Paul was consenting unto his death, and this is Paul telling the story. Um, and uh, in that, you can find that <clears throat> Stephen... The way Paul puts it is that Stephen uh, also was teaching the similar thing that Paul's doctrine teaches. We'll get into that in a minute uh, on Paul's doctrine. But uh, what's what's kind of interesting, and, and, and I uh, listened to a video that they drew from this, was the fact that <clears throat> in that, um, no one witnessed the killing of Stephen. There's no other writings about Stephen's death than with Paul. And with that, Paul kind of says, hey, Stephen, and we all know says being full of the Holy Ghost and uh, is built up pretty big. One of the seven that the uh, apostles had uh, uh, picked uh, to manage certain things. Uh, within their uh, group. And uh, so anyhow, Paul lifts him up and pretty much states that he is teaching the same doctrine Paul's teaching, which is contrary to what the apostles taught or were teaching. Um, so with that, again, I, I, will, I will dig deeper into that and bring more of that out. Um, as as uh, videos go forward, but uh, just just a just a note. Anybody uh, wants to start studying on that? Um, I thought that was very interesting. I didn't realize that and many of us who have been in church for years um, never pull what I'm about to show you out of the scripture. We're usually filtered by the denomination. Um, by the type and flavor of religion that we are a part of. Um, and again, that's what we preach. That's what we teach. If we become a preacher, that's what we preach to people. And that's what the Bible studies uh, dictate to us. And that's just kind of, we just fall into there and we just run with it. And uh, so that's why I say we have filters on because we are, we are going a part of that framework and that narrative that we have been taught and, and, and these denominations are no different than what we're seeing uh, that Paul taught. They have their own flavor of the day. That, that flavor of ice cream that, oh, the vanilla tastes really good. Oh, that makes sense to me. Um, hey, you know, my grandparents used to do that, so it must be right. Um, so that kind of thing that, that is they literally depend on you falling prey to and uh so they they will capitalize on that um the greatest deception and and we've seen it over and over again play out i've mentioned this before is is just like moses god in the old testament chose moses to bring his people out of bondage and lo and behold soon as that was heard by the enemy they tried to kill the firstborn Hebrews so that this selected Hebrew boy could not be born. Well, and now we look at King Herod when the proclamation of Jesus was coming and, and he shall um, be Messiah and the king of kings and, and all these prophecies and the, the, 
things that were being said about it, he decided he was going to go after Jesus. And he inquired of, of the, we call it the three kings or whatever they were, um, to see if, if they would tell him where to find this child, as we hear, we read that lying in a manger that's supposed to become the Messiah or who is the Messiah. Um, and so the whole stories are going back. And so when you see um, Satan has always tried to snuff out the truth. And with that, um, we, we read the Bible and says makes makes no it's it's not strange that that Satan himself would appear as an angel of light. And uh, he's not going to going to appear like the red dragon we, we hear of in Revelation over the uh, a church is not going to be a, a, a it, it's going to be disguised as good. And so I wanted to kind of go into some of that today and just kind of just throw this out there that and, and I don't mean by throwing it out there that just, hey, you know, look at this and, you know, we're just making making uh, uh, we just want to jog you to to not believe the truth. That's not what this is about. This is about knowing the truth. This is about seeing what is really there and not being filtered by your flavor of religion of the day, um, whether it's Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, uh, Catholic, whatever your flavor, whatever the traditions of your family has been or whatever you lean to today. And uh, so anyhow, um, I had uh, run across some videos and I told you guys before that I had been led to look into these things and I knew that Paul, there's no way that he could be right. And this is what led me to this, is, is that what sticks out so uh, bright is the fact that Paul says that Jesus struck him down on the road to Damascus. Now, again, I, I know I say this a lot, but if you have read about Jesus, he's never struck anyone down. He pulled out a whip, as we hear it about those that were you know, buying and selling in the, in the temple, and said, this, this should be a house of prayer. You made a den of thieves. Um, those wordings may not be completely correct. They don't seem to me that goes with Jesus um, because of several other things that I've, I've, I've mentioned to you before. But when you look at this, um, you, you have really got to understand that this Bible that we have, these writings that we have, have been around a long time. And, and this is the playground of evil. This is, this is number one playground of evil. When you go getting into this word, it's, it's, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And, and when we start thinking about these things, this is very real. This is, this is Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And, and, and the high, the, the, the spiritual wickedness in high places, in government, in, in, in the rulers of this world, he talks about. So when you look at this stuff, you got to realize that these things mean something. And, and we can't just go on with blinders reading what's out there. And I've told you many times before, the Bible is, is, is a lot of, lot of uh, manuscripts interwoven and, and they have been framed in such a way that, that we all come together and we all just believe there's a churchy church and a hierarchy and all these things. And, and we kind of start after we read the Gospels and, and Jesus, when we realize who Jesus is and what he did, and, and, and we find out how good he was and what his intentions were, and to bring us life and life more abundantly, then... We, the, the picture of Jesus develops, and then we get over to Acts. We begin to hear about Paul, and we, we see the conversion of Paul. And now this Jesus that we never heard of before comes on the scene. And, and through fear and harm, Paul says that he was converted. And this is the first we ever see that type of Jesus. And, and again, I, as I tell you, the, you, the red lights, flashing red lights and sirens should go off in your head when we see that. 
But no, Paul is lifted up. And Paul, when you read the story of Paul with the King Agrippa and everything else, you see this great parallel. And, and you start having the feelings for Paul as a deity as you did for Jesus. That's true. That's, that's real. I did when I first was reading the New Testament. I, I felt, I, I mean, with, with the tears when we began to see how they treated Jesus. And, and, and if you're sincere and you were reading that, that, those scriptures for the first time, great tears and sadness. And it's like, oh my God, why would they do that? And then when you read Paul's story, it's, it's almost like a parallel Jesus. And, and what's going on here is this is the switch. They're switching out the babies here. And, and, and that's what you're seeing here. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning or this afternoon. And, and we're going we're gonna to kind of dig in and, and kind of see where this is coming from. This is not just something made up from somebody. Oh, I just think this and that. We're, we're going to show you in Scripture here. And so uh, where Paul's teachings were Paul's teaching based on what was Herod the Great's false teaching, which Jesus in Mark 8 and, and I'm going to show you a little bit of video from, from a person that was that was I had listened to um, that kind of did a lot of the, the, the digging for me that I didn't, I don't really have to go back through to, to kind of bring this to you today. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to use what, what he's already given. Now, here's the big thing. They're missing it. The person that put this video out, see, they... The, the church world, okay, the church world is trying to say, see, they're, they're, they're faulting Paul for a different reason. They're faulting Paul for a different purpose. I'm not, I'm not with them on that. I, I'm not faulting Paul because he is running away from the law, and that's what they contend. They, they say that Paul is running away from the law. They're saying that Paul is not interested in the law. He's trying to go to grace. And, and yes, grace is mentioned through this. Um, and, and yes, but I, I believe that that is just a, a, a fake punt, whatever you want. I think that's just a, a, just a little throw you off thing. But Paul was every bit about the law. And, and they're claiming that Paul walked away from the law. They're saying that, that James and, and John and Peter uh, were, were, were saying God is behind the whole law. And that's where, they, where Paul differs from them. So this is, this is what you'll find when you go researching these guys and what, what's going on here. They'll say that the law is forever. They're saying that the law is, is, is what God has put out forever for everybody. I don't agree with that. Jesus came and, and, and changed this. The, the law was for the Jews and those that came the Jewish way. But when he said, I have another, another people who are by my name, you see, they weren't by the name of, of Jehovah. They were by the name of Jesus. This is another that he would bring in. He said, I will take out a name for my, uh, my people for my name's sake. And this tells me that we are different. There is a different, some call it a dispensation. I, I don't know that that's really right. But we are a peculiar people and holy nation that we should show forth the praises of him. Him. Not the old law. Not the people of the law. Not Moses but him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right. So that is none other than Jesus Christ. So when we look here, well, we go to eight, Mark 8 and 14, and I'm going to show you some of this video. Excuse me. Um, and Jesus himself, Mark 8 and 15, and he cautioned them saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, and the leaven of Herod. Now that's kind of strange that he would include Herod in there. But you see, Herod knew that he wasn't able to kill Jesus. So what's the next best thing you could do? Is deceive people. If, if you can't beat them, they say, join them. 
And why would you join them if you don't agree with them? Because so you can mix up and taint and bring confusion and chaos of what they're saying. And we know this from, from the beginning that, that Satan's like thou shalt surely not die. So, so just a few words here and there that will lead you away from Jesus and not to Jesus. So that's, that's what we're looking at here. And when you look at leaven, leaven, Jesus was talking to them and he's making a comparison how if you put leaven in bread, that's what makes bread rise. And it changes its whole uh, meaning and appearance. Okay, and you know that 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 God's law, the diet, dietary law, in in the Old Testament, Le Levitical law and and, and, and law of Moses and, and Aaron and uh, those those things were don't puff up things. God wanted it simple and pure, so they were to eat unleavened bread and, and basically a cracker instead of the bread like we get at the store today. So. When you add a little bit, it only takes a little bit to change it. And that's what Jesus was telling them and referring to. And he said, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. See, Herod wanted to change things. And he started to um, promote religion in a different manner, okay, and to be contrary to what the real uh, gospel was. So Matthew 16 and 11 says, how is it that you fail to understand? And this is, this is the explanation later on that Jesus gives. And it says, how is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So Jesus explains it right here. that I was talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But in 8 and 15, he said the Pharisees and Herod. He, he, he specifically pointed out Herod, King Herod. Okay? And, and knowing what we know now, that Paul, and we'll get into that. But anyhow, let me, let me finish reading. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. But the teaching of the Pharisee and Herod, that's what Jesus was talking about, okay? So here we are, um, and I also wanted to bring out real quick, and, and again, I'm going to play some of the video, um, but it says Galatians 2 and 6, and this here shows us, um, and it's not the only place. You'll find it in other books, and, and, and Romans, some, some stuff in Romans here, and you'll see that. We're not going to bring it all out here. We just don't have the time to, to lay it all out. I want to take no two hours here. But, but you'll see it. And I, I, I urge you to go study these things for yourself. Let God open your mind up to these things. Take off the filters of religion and look at what is really happening in the pages of this Bible and how many of you that have been in church me since I was 18 for years on and off that we have just we've read this over and over and over again but it never just popped out to us because we had filters of religion on and so here we go let's let's read Galatians 2 and 6 and this is Paul speaking this is Paul filling down because when he went to council he wasn't lifted up as this great orator. He was not lifted up or, I'm, I'm going to say, not even accepted. And this is why he's writing this to those that he has converted, to his teachings, to his doctrine, not the doctrine of Jesus, not the doctrine that Peter, James, and John were preaching, not the doctrine of teaching that they got directly from Jesus, okay, that he disagreed with. And he even boasts about charging Peter, rebuking Peter. And, and if you know anything, maybe, and, and I'll just give, it, give Paul this in the writings, as true as they may be, is the fact that, yeah, you know, whenever you get beat down, and you feel like no everybody's against you, you might start puffing yourself up some. So I, I will I will give a little bit to Paul on that, that, that maybe that's why he's boasting and being so 
uh, in your face about, hey, look at me and I did this and I did that and all well, ever. Maybe there's a little, little percent of that. But still, to most of us that know Jesus, we know that none of that is acceptable. And Paul did not know Jesus. Paul had a vision of Jesus and, and, and claims to have that conversation with Jesus. And Paul, Paul's depiction of Jesus was not something we've ever heard of before. So again, that should have set off sirens. And let's go Galatians 2 and 6. And but of these who seem to be somewhat, who is he talking about here? Who's he talking about? Paul is talking about when he went to the council of Jerusalem and when he met with, with Paul, he didn't really talk with James. He didn't know James that much, but I, I, he had, he said he spent like, uh, I think a week or two with Peter. Um, James was more of an acquaintance that, that far as we can read that he didn't really know James all that well, but he spent a week or two with Peter. And that's what's said in the, in the scripture. And that's, that's all we know about that. Um, but anyhow, he said, but of those who seem to be somewhat, okay, just notice here, whosoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, okay? So he's talking about, but of these who seem to be somewhat, the authority of Jesus is what he's really uh, laying to here. And he's saying, those that seem to be the authority of Jesus here, um, he said, whosoever or whatsoever they were, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care what they say about him. I don't care what they thought. They thought they were the, the stuff, you know. They thought they had the, had the mark on Jesus and nobody could prove them wrong. I don't care what they said. And he said, God accepteth no man's person. So here he is justifying himself and degrading Peter, James, and John. God ain't going to just side with them, he's saying. That's what he's saying here. And he says, for they who seem to be somewhat, again, we're back to those who seem to be somewhat, the authority of Jesus, okay, in conference added nothing to me. Now he's talking about that meeting with the council in Jerusalem. In conference, they added or imparted nothing to me. They didn't change my mind. I know what I saw on the road to Damascus. I know what Jesus told me. I know what that spirit vision told me. I'm going to stay with that. That's what Paul is actually saying here. And he literally says, they imparted nothing to me. They didn't change my mind. I still disagree. And that's exactly what Paul says here. And so when you look at these things, you're going to, you're going to find out when you read these things, things, you're going to see where it all comes from. And you're going to see that this is not something. Okay. So um, let me, let me go here to, okay. This is the video. I just want to, want to show a little bit of this video here. Okay. Really just like this warning about the leaven and Herod going in and out of uh, Let me, let me turn this up a little bit. What, what leaven and Herod were we being warned about? We'll take a look. So let's look at the verse. Mark 8, verse 15, King James. Okay, now I've already went over this, and I'm not going to waste the time on this video to go about it, um, but we're, we're going we're gonna to advance forward just a little bit here. And this guy talks about, now where, where he's going with this, and then you can go watch this video, um, and it's called Where Paul's Teaching Based on the Leaven of Herod, Where Paul's Teaching Based on the Leaven of Herod false teaching on the angels and the law. So what he's saying here and what he's trying to bring out is that um, Paul, Herod and Paul, this doctrine that they're bringing forth is, is talking about, he's trying to dis, dis, discredit that Moses received the law directly from God, but it was angels who brought it to Moses in the place of God. He's trying to add that, that other layer of, of fallacy, okay? And then this is where he, once, once he can get you to think that it wasn't God himself, 
So what's happening here is this is the same spirit and this is the same thing that the leverage that he's using here, saying basically that what he found from Jesus was different and what they had was something erroneous and they must not have understood it because he had the truth and Peter, Paul and James or Peter, James and John did not have the truth. Okay. So anyhow, what this guy is trying to do is, is show that they were trying to make it sound like it was angels that gave Moses the law. Okay. And again, these guys, um, they're missing it. They, they, they're thinking Paul is all about uh, grace and not the law. But the Pharisees was everything about the law. So I don't see them changing in that. And I don't agree with, with what you know, they're trying to put forth here. But anyhow, um, that's, that's what they're professing here, that they're changing. Okay, So uh, let's see here. I want to get you the right stuff. So anyhow, they're saying giving credence to the first theory and the one I believe, and I'm just reading here by uh, the Steve Shirley guy, um, is the solid historical tradition that this is what the Jews believed. Many scholars mentioned his or this historical tradition. Perhaps the best proof of this belief is documented by the Jewish uh, historian, Josephus, in his writing Antiquities, book 15, uh, when he quotes King Herod, who said, we have uh, heard from God the most excellent of our doctrines and the most holy part of our law by angels. So again, they're trying to say that where this has come from was angels, and where they're going with this is the fact that angels were fallible. Um, look at all the angels that, that were kicked out of heaven with Lucifer. So they're trying to say that angels brought this, and then if angels brought it, they could be made fallible. But if we stay with the doctrine that God brought this, then how could it be fallible unless you're claiming God lied, right? So that's what they're trying to do. And that's the same spirit. I don't disagree with the spirit of this. I just disagree with that Paul was not part of the law. Paul was not um, pushing the law because he indeed was pushing the law. That's why we have ordinances today throughout all these churches because it is the law. It is the law of Moses. It is brought over the ordinances. Okay. So again, you, you haven't heard me speak a whole lot about Josephus um, or the antiquities that, that was the historian, the Jewish historian that, that talked about a lot of things. And a lot of comparisons are made by Josephus, uh, his, his writings. And so a lot of things are, are backed up by, by these. And, and so I'm not saying that everything is wrong with Josephus, but this is a historian. But this is exactly why some of the churches believe the way they do because they're saying, oh, well, look, here's another evidence. Look at, here's from the book of Josephus, okay? So not everything um, is bad, but I'm telling you what, that's, they, they have pulled some of their doctrine from a historian. And again, if you've listened to some of the other videos, you've seen where I said that they're, they're trying to link things to, oh, well, because so many other people wrote something similar about it, it makes it true. And because this here and, and so many other people talked about it, and, and by the same token that there are less evidence of certain things that we accept than the evidence that's out there, or at least the similarities that are out there, then it must be true for the Bible because there's a whole lot more. And that's, that's basically, there's no facts in that. But they'll use these things to try and make you believe their stories, their doctrine, their false doctrine, the not teachings of Jesus. OK, so um, anyhow, let's go on and let's see here. So, again, like I say, they're trying to point out the fact that that the. 
the whole law and, and, and the, the angels and stuff like that was part of it. And they spent a lot of time on this. Now, we go back again to Galatians 3 and 19. Now, we just, we just talked about Galatians uh, 2 and 6. But it says in 3 and 19, Wherefore, then serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come uh, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now again, this is where Paul is saying it was ordained by angels. Again, this, this allows for that, that, um, that fallacy. So if you see what Paul's doing here, and that's what they're pointing out here, when the wherefore there then serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions. Now this this whole law thing, this angel thing, was promoted by Herod. Okay, and this is what they're saying, and this is what I'm agreeing with is the fact that this whole Herod thing was to discount, discount, and discredit uh, God. The words of Jesus that was heard by Peter, James, and John. And, and they're saying basically here um, that it was ordained by angels. Well, that's what Paul's saying. It was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So here we go with the watering down. And this is what he's teaching uh, the, the Galatians. And let me see here. I think um, there's some stuff here on the Roman side of it. Let's just go here. Um, I just don't want to spend a whole lot of time with this. And again, there's Acts 7.38. This is he, Moses, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Okay, again, a portion where Paul is saying the angel spoke to him. Okay, and, and so there's, there's a little twisting of, of what... It wasn't the angel. It was God. And he's trying to take God out of the picture so they can put that discredit, um, the, the, the virtue of, the, of the, 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 the laws. Okay? And uh, so, 753, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. So again, you're seeing where they're trying to prove here that Paul was talking about and trying to discount God's word and, and, and make it sound like it was the angels and not God, okay? Um, again, you look at, we're not gonna go into these because again, I, I, I advise you to go look at some of this. Check it out, okay? But after faith has come, so here you look at uh, verse 24 and 25 of Galatians in, in chapter three, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith, okay? So there's nothing wrong with a lot of this. This is where they're trying to say, again, and I hope I'm not losing people, but, but this is where they're trying to say that Paul is departing from the law, but he's really not, okay? He's talking about justified by faith. There was a change. Jesus told us there was, okay? Um, because... We're, we're, we're going to live through Jesus now, through the works that he did. I and my Father are one. I'm not separate from God, Jesus said. Okay? And you can't come to Jesus. You cannot come to the Father but through Jesus. So that change is real. That is a new way, new and living way, Jesus said. Okay, but he says, wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith is come, we are no longer under the law. That's what that's what Paul's saying. Okay, and that's why they're coming up with these things. Okay, so anyhow, let's move forward. Um, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But now after the, ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how ye turn again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. 
He observed days, months, times, and years. Okay, and I'm not going to get into that either. But but again, if you read these things, if you start looking, you're going to see where Paul is guiding you away from Jesus. And it's not just the law. What these these guys trying to say? It's against the teaching of Jesus. Okay, so here we are. Let's move forward. And uh, the Jubilees, uh, he talks about the Jubilees, the elements and the spiritual. Um, Colossians, according to Jewish IDs, all things had their special angels. Um, talking to these things, the book of the Jubilees, um, how that angels were like, you had an angel of the wind, the clouds, darkness, hail, frost, uh, thunder, lightning, uh, winter and spring. Um, how some of these things come from the book of Enoch. Um, Angels of the stars and stuff. So they're trying to water down um, and, and say that, you know, hey, these things came from inferior angels. And the doctrine that, that Peter, James, and John is teaching is, is, is based on angels, okay? But Peter, James, and John were the people that were with Jesus, all right? So here we are. And let's, we're going to wrap this up soon. Uh, beware of the leaven of Herod. Um, and anyhow, Acts 13 and 1, uh, we've got this in there. It says, uh, basically, Manan was a foster brother of Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Okay, so Saul was related to Herod, the king, uh, King Herod. And uh, so this we've, we've spelled this out in, in our... Uh, In our notes that we've provided on Facebook there. And then I'm going to move forward. And uh, according to Josephus, again, Herod Antipas, the Tetrarch, his full brother Archelaus and his half-brother Philip were raised and educated in Rome. And again, the Antiquities of Josephus, 17, 20, 21. Hence those raised with Herod Antipas, the Tetrarch, were educated in Rome. Um, and again, he says, I would not be surprised if Saul or Paul, we know the name Saul, Paul is one and the same, had also studied in Rome as a young man through he as younger than Herod, the Antipas, the, the Tetrarch. OK, so anyhow, I'm going to stop here, but I just wanted you to see this. Um, and again, I hope to make this a little more clear at a later time. But I just wanted you to see what is going on with this stuff and how that you need to really start reading this Bible, these these scriptures, um, and, and know that you, you just can't go with everything that your, your filtered religion has been telling you all these years. You've got to really look at this for what it really is. And again, I didn't mean it to take this long. But I appreciate everyone that has uh, joined today and is a part of this ministry. And God bless you and uh, have a great day. And we'll, we'll come back to some of this in uh, days to come.